Hello. So far what we've done is solved the time independent Schrodinger equation where we defined all of the constants in this fashion here and we call them k sub 1 to be squared. So what I'd like to do now is show what happens if we swap the order of e and v bringing the minus sign outside and in other words define the constants in a slightly different way. If we do so I'm going to call them k sub 2 to be squared. So it's minus 2m outside of e minus v over h bar to be squared. And what we'll see is that the functional form of the solutions to the differential equation will look different, but of course the information they contain will be the same. So here's our time independent Schrodinger equation. And what I'm going to do is rearrange it such that we can use k sub 2 to be squared, and this is how it will look. Of course this by the way is a homogeneous equation in that one side of the zero, or excuse me, one side of the equals is zero. Now we're going to use the characteristic equation in order to solve our differential equation. And that means we must have it in the following form here. Whereby of course the coefficient a and the second derivative term must be equal to one. Well, I've written down our differential equation here and just been a bit careful with the definition of the coefficients. So this is the same thing. We'll see of course that the coefficient a is equal to one that the coefficient b is equal to zero, in other words, we don't have a first derivative term, and that the coefficient c is minus k sub two to be squared, which is summarized here. Now, in order to get the solution to our differential equation, we'll solve the characteristic equation, which is a quadratic equation in lambda, whose coefficients are a, b, and c from the, the differential equation itself. So, Solving the quadratic equation is very straightforward, it involves using this expression here. And we'll find that lambda plus minus, the solution to our characteristic equation, is simply plus or minus k sub two. Now, most generally, lambda, the solution to our characteristic equation, is a complex number. It has a real component, a real part alpha, and an imaginary part beta. It allows us to get the general solution to our differential equation, which is given by this expression here. And this basically says that we have a real exponential outside of a linear combination of cosines and sines, where the argument of the real exponential is alpha x, where alpha is the real part of our solution lambda to the characteristic equation, and the arguments on the trigonometric functions cosine and sine is beta x, where beta is the imaginary part of lambda, which is the solution to the characteristic equation. So I've said that using a bit more English here. These, of course, are equivalent statements. So in our current definition of the time independent Schrodinger equation, when we solved the characteristic equation for lambda, we found that its real component alpha is simply plus or minus k sub two and we found that the imaginary component beta is zero. So let's plug those in. Well, the sine of naught or sine of zero is zero, so that'll disappear. The cosine of zero is one. So that means we're just gonna have a times e to the plus or minus k sub two x as the general solution to our differential equation. So the general solution to our differential equation is simply a linear combination of real exponential functions given here. But remember, really in order to make a general solution, we must have a linear combination of two particular solutions. Now, I suppose you could say that the two particular solutions are here because we have a plus minus term. So we'll write that explicitly. We're gonna have that the general solution is gonna be a times e to the k sub two x plus b times e to the minus k sub two x, where of course k sub two is defined as follows, and this is the differential equation we're looking to solve. Now, this is slightly different to when we had a trigonometric solution to our differential equation, because in that time we, we didn't need the plus minus component or the plus minus element to the solution of our characteristic equation, because we already had two particular solutions, we had a cosine and sine. So that's why we only need the, we only need either the plus or the minus. However, 
when we define the characteristic equation, or excuse me, the differential equation in this manner, we get real exponential solutions like this. And that means in order to have a general solution, we need to take a particular solution with a plus k sub 2x and a particular solution with minus k sub 2x.